The whole idea of, of this is the fact that we, the exciting time and the, the interesting thing we've had and learnt from, including the mistakes, we are able, we feel, to pass this on to the next generation and encourage them in turn to do the same because the projects are becoming no less demanding and perhaps even more demanding and require a more um, all-round engineering ability. Back in the 1960s, uh, Nine Wells Hospital was started and it was at that time one of the most complex building projects in Britain. What made it special was that it was the leading edge of clinical science and brought into play new sciences um, on a scale that hadn't been seen before. It was Scotland's new hospital. It was more than that, it was a teaching hospital and that meant it had extensive research laboratory accommodation. In fact the laboratory block as built originally had something over 1,000 rooms in it, so you get an idea of the scale of the project. The construction was itself demanding. It spread along the, the hillside at Nine Wells, and the buildings, all the different departments, are linked at one level, which we called the 192 Pipe Service Street level. And this formed a very special part of the design. The idea being that all the principal services were contained in this one corridor which was also vehicular access and allowed the hospital to function without vehicles carrying say linen or supplies outside the structure at all. That was something new but from our point of view it put a lot of demands upon the construction team because you were joining building after building continuously with concrete structures that never ended. And it was quite an impressive project to see it with something like six tower cranes hanging over the length of it at one stage. And when I say that in our drawings records office, it was estimated that there were 28,000 copies of drawings, you have some idea as to the scale. We didn't have computers you were actually sorting through files. So having a filing system was as important as having access to the drawings themselves. It was the skill level that was available at that time in the construction industry that enabled the project to go ahead with the quality of end product that was achieved. And this was particularly the case with concrete. The concrete skills came from the former hydroelectricity generating schemes. So we had access to joiners, shuttering joiners, steel fixers, and people who'd done the setting out on these really large scale civil engineering projects of a decade previous, who were able to overcome the difficulties. The difficulties we're talking about here are to do with the site. Nine Wells is on a sloping site. It's on rock, and there's an awful lot of water comes out of that rock. And this meant that the conditions that they were working with were very demanding and therefore to get a quality structure required the men to work with very high levels of precision. You've got to remember also that in those days we didn't have access to GPS, it all had to be done with theodolites and a great deal of manual measurement. In 1996 I joined Peter's Estates team as an assistant director, um, as one of three assistant directors and with that we became involved in Nine Walls Teaching Hospital as well as the, the main university. Anecdotally, I had actually, as immediately following graduation in 69, had actually, uh, uh, actually worked with Ovarup and Partners, or Arabs as we now call them, on, on the, the design of the project. So as engineers, our role was quite wide. Many uh, civil engineers and engineers of all types are now involved in the running of projects once they are built and the day-to-day -day means and the adaption of those which takes good engineering knowledge um, and understanding. The other area where we had to have um, some uh, knowledge and ability and, and my background is predominantly on construction management was in setting up what was called the service level agreement. 
So the negotiation and monitoring of that could be quite uh, demanding at times. And again, our argument would be, this should not be left purely to commercial people, but engineers who understand the mechanics of this should be involved. So overall, civil engineers at Nine Wells have been involved both in the, in the initial building of the project, the further development of it, and also the operation of it. Nine Wells obviously is an old building, but within it there have been major developments. But interestingly, the quality of the original structure is the underlying strength. And this, I think, is where we can look to the science of engineering, civil engineering, and see that if we're looking in this day and age of embodied energy, being green, you're looking at durability. Structures should be able to withstand the passage of time and also be capable of adapting to the new demands that are placed upon them. Nine Wells epitomises that. I think the civil engineers can feel proud of their work, their efforts, and that is really what the profession is all about. It's a challenge, an exciting challenge. I've benefited from it. I know that Alan has. We've both had exciting careers. I wouldn't change it for anything.